All right, so we're going to cover a couple things tonight. So this is a this session is uh, um, the, the members of the have been asking for it for a while, and it just took me a while to put it together. We had a lot of things going on. We have some really awesome speakers. Uh, two of them that uh, flew in, and one of them that commuted from Brooklyn. So we have a uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of speakers. Tonight. So we're going to cover the shop plugin first. Uh, for, uh, for e-commerce, then we're going to cover WP e-commerce, and then I don't even know how to pronounce it. Equid. Equid is an alternative uh, type of plugin that we'll explain to you. How we're going to do that. All right, and my laptop wants to restart. All right, um, our sponsors. So most one of the most important things about having this meetup, and the, the old members know, is that we, we we're having problems finding venues in this town. It's not always that easy. But Enrolate, um, who's one of our Regular sponsors also has their office here at NYU Poly and got us this room and the room next door. So I'm going to have Oliver from Enrelay tell you a little bit about uh, their product and then we'll start. All right. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, Hi. Uh, yeah. Steve says I'm uh, really awkward in front of crowds, so I'm going to try and you know, really sell this, even though it's free. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, our company developed a contextual related post plugin for WordPress. Uh, we released it in July, and um, I'm here to kind of, you know, plug it. And basically, you can see uh, this is what it looks like, either a thumbnail view or a text view. And, um, you know, you can read the slides. Basically, it's, you know, it, it inherits the look and feel of your own site. You can also edit the style sheet if you want, so it'll, um, you know, look good on your site. It, um, it links to posts from your blog, or you can also link to partner posts. If you're a, you know, a developer and you have, say, 20 sites, or even some people have hundreds of sites, you can share content between all of them and help increase the click-through rate between uh, each site. Um, and right now, you know, it's basically, um, you know, it's running on about 3,000 sites and um, getting viewed about 100 million times a month. So I guess people like it. Um, <laughs> And uh, for you know the average user, the click through rate is about six percent, meaning that someone clicks on the widget about six percent of the time. Uh, we also have optional advertising for it, and we support it. And other than that, I think that's pretty much the best I can do right now. <laughs> so you know, try it out. Go to the site, download it, email me, whatever. <laughs> All right, thanks. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. All right. We have Jonathan Davis from Chop. Uh, Hello, I flew in from Ohio and it was a very rough landing uh, and very early, so hopefully I'll make it through this. Uh, my name is Jonathan Davis. Um, back in 2008, uh, I wrote the Shop plugin for a client while I was doing freelance consulting um, and needed e-commerce and the existing solutions just didn't fit the bill, um, so I started writing my own. It took me about three months to write the core plug in to get it launched on just one site for my client. It took me a further eight months to make it ready for public release. Um, now we have an entire team behind the plug in, um, so we're continuing to develop it very rapidly. Um, so to break down some of what it can do, um, it, of course, as you would expect, it, it powers an e-commerce catalog. It has a built-in shopping cart system, and then it also offers the transaction engine. It supports categories and subcategories much like WordPress, but in a separate data set. Um, has product catalog search, which is really powerful. Uh, breadcrumb navigation, and also uh, dynamic grid and list views. It inherits your CSS, so it will work with uh, any theme that follows the WordPress development guidelines. Um, we, ha we have about 16 payment systems available. There are four, four and a half, I guess, uh, payment systems that are built into the plugin when you purchase the plugin. I should say it is a commercial plugin. Uh, unlike, I think, some of the other options that you'll see. Um, the entry cost is pretty low. It's $55 for a single site, uh, $2.99 if you're a developer and want to deploy a lot of sites and support them. Um, so we've got 10 shipping calculators, uh, lots of template tags, about 16 different template files um, that you can put into your theme and then customize with your theme to make it as seamless an experience as you, could, as you have skill to make it. Um, so with that, I'm going to jump into actually creating um, a shop site, uh, starting with installing WordPress. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and you should probably change the prefix if you're really security minded. Um, it's always good to have a different prefix than the default. And we're ready to go. And I won't be secure here just to make it easy on me. <clears throat> Pretty standard stuff so far. Um, the only thing we'll need to do at this point is uh, actually download a copy of the plugin, which you'll have to purchase. Um, you'll have a download link in your receipt. Um, so once it's downloaded, it uploads uh, much like any other plugin. Uh, so I've already got it uh, uncompressed. Uh, we'll connect over FTP so that you get the, the sense of what it of where to put it. It goes in WP Content Plugins, and apparently I didn't wipe it out earlier. But so this is what it looks like to upload. It's pretty simple. And now it will appear in our list of uh, available plugins to activate. So pretty easy stuff so far. Uh, the main point is it works like any other plugin in WordPress. Just because it's commercial doesn't mean it can't play well. Um, once you click on shop, uh, it's going to give you a nice warm and fuzzy welcome, um, tell you what's next, uh, and then we're ready to start setup. So I'm going to really kind of briefly go through these setup and not describe a whole lot now. Um, and please hold your questions until afterwards when we get into the individual session. So there's a spot for a merchant email address. This is just going to send any uh, order receipts, order notifications to the, to the merchant as well as the customer, um, and any other shop-related information that needs to be sent. Um, next, you need to set up the base of operations to tell shop where you're going to be operating the store from. It's important for several factors, um, including shipping and taxes. Uh, how shop works with that. Uh, then you select the target markets that you want to sell to. Um, you can enable dashboard widgets. There are several that shop comes with. And then uh, order status labels we'll get into in the other session. Uh, once that's done, your shop is really pretty much ready to use, but you might want to go through and, and set up a few of the other things. Um, some of these checkout elements. I'm just going to enable accounts integrated with uh, WordPress accounts. Real quickly, shop works in three different account modes. So uh, it can work in a no account system where every customer is essentially a new record, so more of a historical log of customers. This works for big ticket sites where you don't have a lot of repeat shopping. Um, then there's shop only accounts, so this uses an account system totally separate of WordPress. Uh, so customers that come in, um, they set up, they specify their email address and a password, um, and they register an account at the end, during the checkout process. At that point, they can come back to the site, log in, and access previous downloads, order receipts, etc. Um, and they just need to use their email and password that they specified. Um, the third option is this uh, integrated with WordPress, which will actually create a WordPress user account to go with it. They can use either the WordPress login or the shop email, the customer email account, uh, email to log in uh, as well. You've also got download limits that you can set up. Uh, shop does handle both physical. Uh, and digital downloads, physical products and digital downloads. Uh, as I said, I'm going to breeze through this. Um, payment methods, uh, real briefly, we offer two checkouts, uh, Google Checkout, PayPal Express, and PayPal Standard. Um, these are all off-site payment systems, so your customer is redirected to another location. Um, this has the advantage of your, uh, your website doesn't have to be specifically PCI compliant. Um, it offloads that PCI portion to uh, the payment processor. Uh, we also offer an offline payment solution, which is really just a way of providing instructions for making offline payments for, say, COD or uh, bank transfer, wire transfer type of payments. Um, and then a test mode, which just allows you as a designer to test the whole checkout experience and make sure you have all of your styles set up uh, for seamless use. Uh, I'm going to set up just PayPal standard real quick and uh, test mode. I'm actually going to run through a quick checkout process um, during my presentation. Uh, next is shipping. Um, you'll need to set up uh, your units if you're going to use shipping, uh, which becomes particularly important for live shipping systems. Um, 
We offer several built-in calculators. These are really just rate tables, basic rate tables. We offer flexible options. So uh, you can just do a flat rate on the order. You can do flat rate per item. Um, and then we've got the different tier uh, calculators as well. So you can do up to one, up to five, and get different uh, pricing for different destinations. If you need a little more granularity and you happen to be operating in the US, Canada, and I think we've added Australia, um, you can actually set up domestic shipping uh, regions. And just to show you what this does, uh, instead of just having USA, now we've got different regions within the US where we can get a little more granular detail. Um, obviously, what we've tried to do is make a good compromise between how much data you have to manage, how many prices you have to actually manage, um, and the amount of time that you're spending. Um, if you really want total control, uh, there are plenty of programming hooks where you can totally customize or write your own uh, shipping module, or you can get any of the live shipping rates that we offer. We, we have add-ons for FedEx, um, UPS, USPS, Canada Post, Australia Post, which probably doesn't matter much to this crowd. Um, so I'm going to set up just a standard shipping real quick. Um, and I don't know what this will cost, so these are made up numbers. And then taxes. Um, you'll have to enable taxes if you want to actually collect, um, collect those and charge those uh, in your orders. Uh, you would specify it by area, so we're going to set up one for US, New York. You guys have a pretty complex <coughs> tax structure here. Um, so in, in doing a little research, um, we actually have support for local rates. Uh, you just have to uh, build a local rates file, uh, which I've already done in preparation for this. And so you can upload it and it'll send all the rates up. And it's a live demo, so it's going to be problematic. There we go. <clears throat> and so you can set up these different tax rates. Um, so it's 4% uh, state tax, I believe, and then all of these uh, municipal and county local areas get added. Um, and so shoppers, when they're checking out, they'll be able to select an area. If they're from New York, they'll be able to select which area applies to them. We had to do it this way rather than zip codes because uh, you wouldn't believe how difficult it gets worldwide, trying to support worldwide. They don't do this in the UK exactly the same. Um, especially since they don't have zip codes. All right. Uh, so we're almost ready to go. Uh, of course, we need products in our catalog. So I'm going to burn through adding a quick product. And I'll start with a WordPress shirt. Um, now, an important thing I want to draw your attention to is how seamless this process is because you, once you're in product editing mode, you don't have to leave it to get things set up. Uh, so I can create a category right here and get it, assi get it assigned to this product. Um, and shop supports subcategories as well, so I might do a WordPress subcategory. And you can see how it builds the hierarchy right in the product editor. Another nice feature that uh, we can do is track different facets, uh, different detail facets of a product. Uh, so with details and specs, uh, we can track and list things for the product like fabric. Uh, and it's put it on another row. Um, so here we'll put, I don't know, cotton. And maybe we'll track brand as well. Um, Obviously, then it's easy to add product images. Now, in my testing of this, it keeps, it initially pulls up the wrong images, so I'll see if it does that to me here. Yep, it did. This doesn't actually happen on your box. It just happens on mine today. Anyway, I reselect the files. It does actually grab the, the right files. Um, what's nice about the product editor, uh, the image editor, is the first image is going to be kind of the cover image for your product. Uh, you can easily drag and drop whatever order you want them in. 
Uh, as you can see, you can, you can upload multiple images at the same time, which makes it really fast to get this data in, which is really important to us. Uh, here's where the key comes in. This is the price and delivery row. Um, we call it a price line editor. Um, so you have options to set a, a, an initial price for the product, um, then a sale price if you want to put it on sale right in the product editor, uh, assign shipping information. Um, if you want to track stock, you just turn on the inventory controls, um, assign it a quick uh, SKU if you use SKUs in your products. Um, Shop also supports several different types of products. Uh, virtual products, which would be intangible. I thought virtual sounded better than intangible. Uh, so you could sell services uh, or other uh, non-real products. Downloads, digital downloads. Uh, it's easy to attach a file. Uh, donations, we, we offer support for donations with uh, variable amounts and even setting a minimum donation level. Um, and then uh, a big part of shop, and I'm sure a lot of you are curious about this, is the variation system. Um, we have a pretty complex variation model, uh, so I can very easily set up complex variations uh, without getting my brain all twisted around. Um, so something about shirts that's common is you're going to have different colors and different sizes. So we need to provide these options to our, to our shoppers. So I'll enter a cup. Uh, what I do in setting this up is I actually design the menu and the menu options all in one fell swoop, and it's going to create all the price lines for me. Uh, so I'll start with uh, white and blue, as you would expect. And then create a second menu for sizes. And we'll do large, medium, and add one for small. And uh, part of what you can do here is you can order these around, drag and drop. We've tried to make it as easy as possible. Um, and then shop automatically fills in all the price lines for every variation option combination that there could possibly be um, for you. Now, as you're looking at this, and you know we set this price to $15 before, you think, oh man, I don't want to have to type $15 six times or 200 times. Well, we thought about that as well. Uh, we created a system where you can uh, simply link all the variations together. We can type $15, everything gets set to $15 in a snap. Um, it works for everything. So I can type in any field. We'll set the sale price to $90.99, turn on inventory tracking, set up our base amounts, and then when I'm ready to edit individual options, I can just unlink the variations and make minute adjustments as needed. Ma makes very quick, time-saving work. <clears throat> Next, uh, we do offer support for tagging. Tagging comes into play with some of the smart categories we have, which I'll go into in the other session. Um, you can schedule when you want uh, products to post, just like uh, you'd expect from WordPress. Um, and another time-saving feature is the workflow menu, which allows you to jump to different products um, or different actions uh, after save, so that you don't have to do any extra clicking. So if I wanted to create a new product right after this, I select new product and I've got a blank product editor, I'm ready to go for my next one. So we thought a lot about the workflow problems that uh, people have to deal with when managing a lot of e-commerce information. Um, now, just to give you a sense for what's going on on the front page, uh, on the front end, we go to the product catalog view, and here's how Shop represents it in the default 2010 theme of WordPress. So it inherits the themes, uh, link colors, and structure, and, and the theme becomes a wrapper uh, around Shop's content. Uh, by default, uh, shop lists in grid view, but you can switch, the customer can has control to switch it up between views uh, from grid to list. Uh, in list view, there's the option for add to cart right here, so you can just jump it in there. Um, in here, you'll notice uh, there's a easy access variations menu where they can select a, a, different, min, a different option if they want. Um, I didn't set it up, but you can see different price differences. So this is a, a nice way in the cart of kind of upselling to the next level uh, for certain variations. Um, as you would expect, you can manage different aspects of the cart, uh, changing the destination country, changes our shipping rates based on how the shipping was configured. Uh, I'll set it back to US for now. Uh, and we'll go to checkout. <clears throat> so here's the uh, kind of what you'll see in a checkout. Form. Now, because I've already set this up with WordPress integrated accounts, it's not going to ask me for a password because it already knows what WordPress account I'm using. So it's just going to append that information to the WordPress user I'm already using. Uh, so I can dump my information in for the checkout. This 
is about the only other address I know, valid address I know beyond my own. Okay, and I'm, if I did PayPal uh, right now, uh, because PayPal is in the checkout process right now, it would actually jump to a confirm order screen for the user to confirm their order. Um, the page is necessary in order to build the form elements to send, off, send them off to PayPal with all the, the information PayPal needs. Um, you could put the PayPal button on the shopping cart uh, if you edit your templates, and then they bypass this checkout form altogether. So we try and offer as many flexible options um, to make the buying process as painless as possible. Um, but I'm going to use the credit card because I don't have an internet connection. And there is an opt-in button automatically for opting into marketing material, which you can then export your customer list to whatever uh, marketing system you have. Uh, submit the order, and we're it's going to ask me to confirm it, and we're done. And that's uh, check out the shop. Next up, we're going to have Shane uh, Sanderson, and he's going to go with the Congress. My name is Shane. Um, I'm going to go kind of quick because Jonathan took a long time. So um, uh, you can find me online at these places. Um, I'm, th this next slide was anybody at uh, WordCamp Phoenix two weeks ago? No? Okay. I'm reusing slides, so if you were there, overlook that. Um, I was a co-founder of Nine Seats. Uh, we do custom WordPress development, uh, but actually as of yesterday, I left the company, so just, that, that was part of my slide. Um, I'm from Texas, and uh, it's cold up here. And WP Ecommerce, we're going to talk about, uh, again, this is going to be quick. Uh, it works with any WordPress theme. Uh, they got short code support, which you guys are familiar with short code. Everybody know what short code means? Who doesn't know what short code means? Short code is um, like in the my product, my uh, editor. If I'm making like a new page or a new post, I get a cool little button up in my uh, text in my text editor, and I can click that and say add a product, and it'll dump a little piece of code in that will pull that product into my page or post. So that's what short code means. Uh, we can talk more about that later if you want. Um, they offer physical and digital products, kind of the same as shop. You can sell shirts, you can sell MP3s, you can sell PDFs, um, services, whatever. Uh, multiple payment gateways are available. Uh, they offer free shipping discounts. Like, you know, um, you buy 100 bucks worth of stuff, you get free shipping. You buy 50 bucks worth of stuff, you get free shipping, whatever the case may be. Um, with the new version of WP Ecommerce, they've made heavy use of custom post types. So if any of you guys are developers and know what that means, uh, it's really cool. So you can uh, get a copy of it at gitshop.org. Um, I think that's all my slides. Um, this is one showcase site that they wanted to show off. Um, and by the way, I'm not um, directly affiliated with the company that makes WP Ecommerce. I just work with them and represent them when uh, need be. So um, anyway, just to get that out of the way. But um, Icon Doc is a really cool shop. If you want to go to it, if you have a connection or go to it when you get home, it's powered by WP Ecommerce. Um, it's really cool. Uh, thank you. And that's all my stuff. And then uh, I'll go through real quick. Uh, I'm not going to go through a whole demo. Uh, but I, uh, one thing that's kind of cool, uh, this is a free plugin. Okay, It's free on the WordPress plugin repository. Um, they do have add-ons available that do cost. So if you're looking at free versus a commercial plugin, if you want a lot of the cool stuff that WP Ecommerce offers, you're going to pay a little bit for it. So don't be offset by the, the shop costs money and this one doesn't. You're going to pay something no matter what you do if you want it to be cool. Um, but as far as the plugin goes, it's almost been downloaded a million times, which is really cool. So it's been around for a while. Um, you can see all the different versions that people are using and all that. But Almost a million times is, is that's 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 uh, something to be proud of, I guess. So, anyway, um, if you guys want to bump that number up before we get done tonight, that'd be cool. Um, so, uh, come on, I'm just saying. Um, so, in in the dashboard uh, of our WordPress um, site, we've got. I've already installed the plugin, um, and if you need to know how to install WordPress, Jonathan already showed you how to do that, so we're good. Um, so in the plugins, we've got, uh, here's my WP Ecommerce, I've already activated it. And what they do, they, the, in the new version, um, well, who's using WP Ecommerce right now? Okay, cool. Well, anyway, so in the new, uh, my room's going to be small. In the new uh, version, 
they uh, have broken the, the area up in the dashboard. Like, for example, it used to all be listed under this products tab, right? Like everything to do with WP e-commerce was listed there. What they've done in the new version is they've broken it up where it kind of makes more sense with WordPress. So if you want to do the store settings, you're gonna go into the settings area and you see this new little store tab. So it kind of puts it into the settings area where all your WordPress settings are at. I'm not gonna go through all this stuff with you because it's, it's pretty basic. Uh, where do you live? How do you want the site to look? Do you want to enable taxes, shipping? Kind of all the same stuff we've already gone through with the uh, shop. But, and then um, in, in the dashboard area, we have our store sales where it shows us an overview of our sales. And if we have any upgrades, uh, we can enter that information in here. But we have our regular products area where I'll, I'll go ahead and enter one product if we want to see how that works. Uh, so I'm gonna add a new product. What was yours called? WordPress t-shirt? I'm not, I was, I was going to leave the little P to piss somebody off. Um, WordPress, let's see, coveralls, those would be cool. I'm from Texas. Um, description, I don't wear coveralls though. Description here, you guys can't see all this, can you? Um, well, let's not do a, a walkthrough right now. So you get the idea. You set up your product, you save it, you go to the store, and uh, I don't have a product there. So we're going to set the, uh, here's the title, here's the description. Um, if we have an off-site product link, like say we have a, a product like on an eBay store or something like that we want to sell, we can put a link here. So it's going to show our product on our site, but when we click on it, it'll go over to our eBay store to let the person buy it. Okay, that's what that means. Additional description is exactly as it sounds. Uh, product download, if we have a, a downloadable file, MP3, PDF, whatever, we can attach that here to the product. Uh, we can set product images, so I'm gonna go ahead and put an image in. This uses the media uploader from WordPress. So I'm gonna go to computer, I'm gonna select a file. I've got a really cool computer that I wanna sell. It's gonna upload the image, and down here I'm gonna say use as product thumbnail. Okay, easy enough, done. Um, let's see, uh, I'm not gonna go over all that stuff. Over in the right column is our price control. So we can set a price, sale price if we want, if we want it to be a donation, uh, if we want to add a SKU number, and we can set taxes. That's all set up in the settings that I didn't do already. And then I'm going to publish this product and hope that it works on the front end. Uh, let's see. So we'll go here, we'll go to our products page. There's my picture, it has a cool little light box guy. I can add it to the cart. Um, it tells me I added it to the cart. I want to continue shopping, go to checkout. That's a setting that we can set up. You can't see half my screen. Here's the checkout page. You get the idea. Um, it's a cool plugin and it sells stuff. So uh, I'm good. Come see me later if you want to know more. All right. Awesome. All right, so when I first put this together, these are the two, these are the two Probably major uh, e-commerce plugins, and it was typ typical. There are WordPress plugins, you install them, and all the product information, the sales information, pretty much all the WordPress data. Right? It's, all, it's all local. Um, but I also wanted to show something. I thought we would want to show something as an alternative, and then, um, we're going to show Equid. And Equid is uh, a different type of plugin. Everything you manage is offsite at Equid.com, and but it's JavaScript that goes into your website. It's a little different in terms of install and, and using it, but um, so it's important to show you something different. Hi, my name is Greg. Um, I work both as a filmmaker and a web designer, and occasionally I have the luxury of combining both, and I do uh, design movie websites using WordPress. Um, I'm going to be um, introducing um, Equid. Sorry, this is going to look terrible, so please forgive me. I'm introducing this product called Equid. Um, it's celebrated its first anniversary last September, so it's a very young product, but uh, don't let that deceive you. Um, it's, uh, the headquarters for the company that's involved in this is based in Russia. There are 140 employees involved in this company. 14, 14 of them are dedicated towards de developing this product. Um, it has about 23,000 users, and it serves about 60 million requests a month. Um, and as Steve was mentioning, the difference here is that this is hosted elsewhere, not within WordPress itself. Um, just to give you some context to how I, I, I stumbled across Equid as a solution for my situation, I'm going to present it as a case study. 
I'm actually from uh, Cape Town, South Africa, and actually that should be a very attractive shot of Cape Town right there. <laughs> um, and as you know, last year we hosted the World Cup as soccer, which was the very first time uh, it happened in Africa. So it's a monumental occasion, and I was very disappointed I couldn't actually go back home. So I wanted to be involved in this big occasion. So what I did was I found uh, some designs that I really liked, and I licensed about five designs, and I started creating these t-shirts. We came up with some variations that should be green at the bottom, and that's red in the bottom right. Uh, but came up with different color combinations, and these are some of the different designs that, we, that I licensed. And obviously, I had to get started, and I knew I had to set up a website, a Facebook page, and a YouTube tra channel. So obviously, the website, quick and easy, be WordPress, I knew it was fine. So um, the next step was doing the e-commerce uh, part of it. And as most people do, they go to the repository, search through the options, do a bit of research, I tried out a few options. Uh, but I ran into a few stumbling blocks that got me a little frustrated, and one of them was uh, being able to customize CSS. It just became um, a big effort. I didn't have a lot of time. This was six weeks before the launch of the World Cup, and I need to do, have everything up and running. Um, and so uh, the other problem I had was uh, uh, shipping options. It was fine setting up a base rate and then uh, a price per item. But I wanted to be able to do things like have, you know, uh, if you buy three shirts, you get free shipping. Uh, so different rules for my shipping options. Um, and so I finally uh, stumbled across Equit. And the great thing about Equit, it has, it is free and always will be free. There are other plans which give you additional features where you're paying, I think it's uh, $16 a month or $17 a month for the silver account and a lot more for the gold account. Um, and you'll see the second option. It, it's very easy to install, uh, quite uh, similar to WordPress itself. Uh, you can set up multiple sites, but you're managing it from one place, uh, which I think is uh, very important. Uh, and same with once you uh, the integration with Facebook and other social uh, networking applications, it's all managed from one place. So the integration is very easy, very seamless. Um, let's flip through. These are some of the different social, social networking sites. So basically what you have to do is go to Equi, the site, set up an account, very straightforward. Then once you set up an account, you get a store ID. And then you go across to uh, WordPress, install the plugin, and just insert the, the store ID. And now you link the two. And then you can just go in and set up, set up a page, which becomes your store page. And as Sean was mentioning, short codes, you've got a number of short codes. You've got an uh, option to have search and um, uh, the actual shopping bag, which I'll get back to later. It's also got widgets that you can drop into the sidebar. At the moment, you can see, number four, I've got a mini card shopping bag. And I love this little feature as well. It's a drag and drop, which I'll show you in a few moments, where you can just drag your items and drop it in the shopping cart, uh, in the shopping bag. Um, so then you, the first thing you need to do is then go to Equit and start setting up your products as uh, both my colleagues have demonstrated here. Uh, we've got the track and the image gallery, all the straightforward um, standard stuff that you'd expect. Here's um, the interface, which I absolutely love. Very clean, very easy uh, to get around. Um, this is basic setup. The weight's important, once again, because that's got to do with shipping. And I do calculations on weight and I'll give a discount if you've got more than 21 grams. That's my three t-shirts. Um, obviously, if you're not shipping tangible goods and it's electronic goods, just leave that um, empty. Uh, the title, the WYSIWYG editor, your um, uh, image gallery down there. And a couple of things here, your price. Uh, you can disable it and enable it in your shop, the product. Uh, you've got stock control, which is great, you know, which was a big issue for me uh, in terms of reordering. I didn't want to track, I, I, you know, two-person operation, I couldn't handle tracking all that. Uh, you can manage it right here. You can see I've enabled it. But it limited to 18, and notify me when you know they're five, down to five. You said, I know they've got to start reordering. Um, if you or your client are looking to dominate the world with your shop, the great thing is that you've got 23 built in storefront languages, so it becomes a lot easier to kind of uh, set things up in other countries. Um, product options, which um, I think John, is it John? John mentioned as well, which I'll get to the electronic goods. And actually, the one nice thing about this one where you can up, your customer can upload a file. Let's say it's their design, their photo that you want to print on, that they can print on your coffee mugs and t-shirts and canvases, whatever it is. That's a nice little feature. <coughs> um, you have to catalog here your, your different uh, options. Once you get the sizes, and you can visit their price. The great thing about this interface, this uh, Ajax interface, is that you can actually drag and drop the order of these, set a default, so that will just show up as the default size when people are shopping. Uh,
This is um, okay. The thing about uh, electronic goods, you want to set time frames, and basically, you want to make it available. The file is made available to the customer once they reach, once once their payment is uh, registered and is accepted. Um, and in terms of the electronic goods, you can stipulate a, a, a lifetime that it's available. It's available for one week, you can download it five times, and then it expires, that link is no longer valid. Or you can make it, um, just leave it em empty for no limits. Uh, this feature, I think, is only available in, not in the free version, that's available in the silver. This is just the image gallery, you can flip through the different thumbnails which are automatically generated for you. <coughs> Once again, the design is, was very important uh, to me. I wanted to make sure it was seemed to be seamlessly integrated into my WordPress site. Uh, they've got um, short codes and, uh, for the product browsers, the search and the link card and so forth, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, the great thing about this, you don't have to worry about upgrades or anything like that. That happens uh, automatically behind the scenes. Um, so there are never any headaches and having to worry about upgrading the software. Um, coming back to WordPress now, we've got our product set up. Um, you can also grab HTML snippets if you wanted to embed them in individual pages, if you wanted additional pages on the site, all the codes there that you can grab. Um, uh, once again, coming to the uh, CSS, you can take, uh, they've got three standard templates, you can copy uh, one of the templates and do any other customizations right there. Uh, Okay, now we're back on, once again, not very attractive, but this is um, the WordPress site. This is our shopping bag right here. It's telling me I've got one item in the bag. That's checked to indicate that that item over there is sitting in my bag. Um, and as I say, it's just drag and drop and double click. I sorry, click on the item and, and uh, add a quantity, price, add, add a quantity, or just drag it into the shopping bag. Um, and this is when you open up the shopping bag. So once again, I just love that it's very clean and very easy to see. Um, what's important to you. Um, and obviously discounts and coupons are, are um, usually a pretty important feature and pretty standard. <coughs> so these are the different kinds of discount options that you can introduce. Um, and variations on them. Integrating with Facebook, once again, is very easy. Once again, you're just using your store ID that you're going to plug in, and you'll just uh, stipulate how many, uh, the, how many rows and columns you're going to be having, um, and then you're all set to go. Once again, managed in one central location. <coughs> On the order side, it obviously tracks everything that you need, uh, all, um, the order history um, that's for both the customer and the administrator. Um, the one thing about that, it can, it'll, have a, it'll track the customer IP for a order, and this is just to help combat, it's one, one sort of level of combating fraud, um, so if there's a disconnect between um, the country uh, that of the, uh, where the, where the order is placed versus where it's been shipped to, it'll raise a warning flag, so then you can just check the order and make sure that it's still legitimate. Um, and this is, once again, just customizing all the, the tags that you can use for customizing the response, the email response that the customer receives. Uh, once the order is complete. Um, this is on the back end is your order management. It gives the details of the orders, uh, cost and shipping, and how it was paid for. Um, payment options, standard, uh, all the options that um, the other chaps have mentioned as well. I've only en enabled two of those at the moment, uh, and that's where you configure them. These are all the payment gate gateways you could possibly have, and a few more. Um, and shipping was a uh, important to me, you can design, uh, define uh, destinations and zones, um, which I'll get to in a moment, and they're all real-time shipping quotes that are coming straight from USPS or UPS and DHL, so forth, um, and the tracking as well. So those are the standard carriers that everyone's familiar with. Um, so this is where I introduced um, basically uh, a standard rate for the US and um, for any orders that happen from outside of the US. So this is where you're just defining your zones and the weight and the cost. Um, I just want to give you some examples and let you, let's say you want to target a, a particular group uh, for a promotion or something like that. You can go in and you can specify, let's say, New York State, you want to target New York State, um, and that's that area code as well, which is in, and you can stipulate so uh, you can stipulate those specific area codes 
Um, you can also use wildcard characters if you want to, uh, you know, uh, encompass a whole group starting with 100. Um, a last couple of things. Uh, if you're looking for a feature that's not in the software, you can you can submit an idea. People vote on it. The ones that surface to the top get considered and incorporated into future releases. The other thing you can do is sponsor a feature, where they'll you, they'll um, they'll help develop that feature for you at a I think it's thirty five dollars an hour, uh, which they'll incorporate into subsequent releases. Um, and if you're looking for a user manual, you're not going to find one. Their philosophy is if the software is easy to use, you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't need a, a manual. And I think in their case, um, uh, it's true. Uh, I find that it's very clean and very easy, easy to use and very, you know, it, there's hardly any maintenance involved. Um, so that's it. That's my contact information. Thanks for your time.